Work from home has become the new normal since the COVID pandemic. Even after the pandemic is over, both employees and employers want to continue the remote work. This phenomena has led to considerably huge utilization of the internet more than ever before. People nowadays spend most of their hours on internet, often without specific measures to ensure a secure session. Not only individuals, corporations across the globe that host data and conduct business over the internet are always at the risk of DDoS attack. These DDoS attacks are becoming increasingly severe as hackers gain easy access to botnet farms and compromised devices. According to Cisco's yearly internet study, the volume of DDoS assaults would more than double by next year. In addition, the average number of recorded DDoS assault every day is approximately 28.7 thousand attacks. I think these statistics are enough to understand why you should learn about DDoS and its prevention measures. And to exactly help you do that, we have bought this interesting session on what is DDoS attack and how you can prevent it. But before we begin with this session, make sure to hit that subscribe button to never miss any technical update from IntelliPath YouTube channel. But before we begin with the session, we shall look into the agenda for this session. We'll begin this session on a friendly note by understanding what DDoS attack is. Later, we'll glance through the types of DDoS attacks. And finally, we'll learn about the preventive measures to become prone to DDoS attacks. I hope I have made myself clear with the agenda. So without wasting any time, let's get started with first topic of this session, what is DDoS attack? We'll try to understand this phenomena with some superficial illustrative example. Meet Stephen. He has recently made his small business online. However, he hasn't given much consideration to internet security measures. The reason being, he is new to the online escalation and has limited financial resources. Also, his product or service is only limited to the specific area. So he felt internet security was not a big deal. Here is the Stephen's web server setup which regulates his web application. When a customer uses the Stephen's website to check out his product or service, the customer streams continuous request for service access that reaches this web server and later solely this web server caters those requests continuously. Now, let's just say that there are few people that have bone to pick with Stephen and they try to attack this web server. So what happens is this attacker is going to use his computer and programs to attack this server and flood it with fraudulent data traffic to try and sort of disrupt Stephen's service. Now this is not DDoS attack. This is just called as DOS attack which stands for denial of service. Since this attack is only coming from the source, normally a network or server is able to handle an attack because it's pretty easy to pinpoint the fraudulent access. The server can just simply close the connection where the attack is coming from. So Stephen's web server is pretty much prone to that DOS attack. However, the problem is that what if an attack comes from multiple sources all at once? Will the web server be able to handle this attack? Let's try and figure out the answer to this question. First of all, this computer sitting right here is somehow coordinating this attack on Stephen's web server from a multitude of locations. Let's say he is a ringleader. He can communicate with other computers around the world and coordinate an attack on this server. So now, instead of an attack coming from a single source, the server now has to deal with attack from multiple sources. And when this happens, it will overwhelm the server. This sort of attack will eat up the server's system resources such as memory, CPU and network bandwidth. As a result, these legitimate computers here are going to be denied service because the server is too preoccupied in dealing with this attack called as distributed DOS attack. So guys, basically DDoS is a cyber attack on a specific server or network with the intended purpose of disrupting that network or server's normal operation. And this DDoS attack does this by flooding the targeted network or server with a constant flood of traffic such as fraudulent request which overwhelms the system causing a disruption or denial of service to legitimate traffic that we have seen in previous example, right? Now coming back to our simulated attack, the web pages that legitimate users want to access are either not going to load or they are going to be very slow in loading and users will get that familiar spinning wheel of lag on their screens. So if this happens, Stephen's website and server both will go down leading to a few days of business loss. Now the next 
most obvious question you guys can think of is how does the attacker gets other computers to get involved in this DDoS attack or a cyber felony? Now the answer to this is pretty straightforward. No one will actually wish to do a cyber felony, right? But there is no need for people's consent. The attacker will develop a malware program and will distribute it over the internet. They will put it on things like websites and email attachments. So if a vulnerable computer goes to these infected websites or opens these infected email attachments, the malware will be installed on their computer. And without even knowing about it, they will be recruited for performing a DDoS attack with the other set of vulnerable computers. This army of recruited computers is termed as botnet technically. The ringleader will coordinate this attack by providing commands over the botnet and web service will be compromised within just few minutes. Now that you guys have understood what DDoS is and what it is aimed at, we'll look into its different types. The first type of DDoS attack we have is volume or network based attack. These attacks use massive amount of bogus traffic to overwhelm a resource. The targeted object for this attack would be website or a server. To sort of give you example, this attack includes ICMP, UDAP and spoof packet flood attacks. The size of volume based on attacks is measured in bits per second and they particularly focus on clogging all the available bandwidth for the server and thereby cutting the supply short. Several requests are sent to the server, all of which warrant a reply, thereby not allowing the target to the general legitimate users. Next we have is protocol level attack. These attacks are meant to consume essential resources of the target server. They exhaust the load balancers and firewalls which are meant to protect the server against DDoS attack. These protocols attack include SIM floods and SMUP DDoS among others. And the size of these attacks is measured in packets per second. Finally, we have application based attacks. Application layer attacks are conducted by flooding application with malicious crafted request. The size of application layer attack is measured in request per second. These attacks are sophisticated attacks that target the application and operating system level vulnerabilities. They prevent the specific application from delivering necessary information to the users and hog the network bandwidth up to the point of system crash. Example of this type of attack would be HTTP flooding and BGP hijacking. A single device can request a data from server using HTTP POST or GET without any issues. However, when a requisite botnet is instructed to bombard the server with thousands of requests, the database bandwidth gets jammed and it eventually becomes unresponsive and unusable. On that note, I hope we have built up some good knowledge base over the DDoS cyber threat. Moving forward, we'll look into preventive measures to sort of defend yourself from these DDoS attacks. The first prevention measure we have on the list is employ load balancers and firewalls to help protect the data from such attacks. Load balancers reroute the traffic from one server to the another in DDoS attack. This reduces the single point of failure and adds resiliency to the server data. Whereas a firewall blocks unwanted traffic into the system and manages the number of requests made at a definite rate. It checks for multiple attacks from a single IP and occasionally slow downs to detect DDoS attack in action. Next preventive tip we have is detect an attack early and mitigate the damage beyond that point. Once you have detected the attack, you'll have to find a way to respond. For example, you'll have to work on dropping the malicious DDoS traffic before it reaches your server so that it doesn't throttle and exhaust your bandwidth. Here is where you will filter the traffic so that only legitimate traffic reaches the server. By intelligent routing, you can break the remaining traffic into manageable chunks that can be handled by your cluster resources. The most important stage in DDoS mitigation is where you will look for patterns of DDoS attacks and use those to analyze and strengthen your mitigation techniques. For example, blocking an IP that's repeatedly found to be offending is a first step. Next tip we have a switch to cloud service providers like AWS and Azure. Cloud services offer a high level of cyber security including firewalls and threat monitoring softwares that can protect your assets and networks from DDoS criminals. The cloud also has greater bandwidth than most private networks and it is very unlikely for it to fail under the high pressure. Additionally, repeated cloud providers offer network redundancy duplicating copies of your data systems and equipments. 
Then we have use content delivery networks that have redundant servers. A CDN distribute your content and boost performance by minimizing the distance between your resource and end user. It stores the cache version of your content in multiple location and this eventually mitigates DDoS attack by avoiding a single point of failure. Final tip on our list is allocate more bandwidth to prevent clogging of data. Since the DDoS attacks fundamentally operate on the principle of overwhelming systems with heavy traffic, simply provisioning extra bandwidth to handle unexpected traffic spikes can provide a measure of protection. However, this solution can be expensive since a lot of that bandwidth is going to go unused most of the time. That's all we have for this session. I hope this session was informative. If you have liked this session, a thumbs up to this video will be much appreciated. Also, if you have any queries about the content covered in this session, please drop them in the comment box below and our 24-7 team of experts will be delighted to resolve all of them. Until next time, I wish you all the best in exploring the world of digital technologies. Just a quick info guys, IntelliPath provides an advanced certification in cyber security by EICT Academy IIT Guwahati. You will get to learn the most important concepts such as ethical hacking, penetration testing and network security in this course. You will get to learn from IIT faculty and industry experts. Reach us out to know more.